morning. This is Kim Hammer with your devotion taken from 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 24. Can it be a sin too far is the question. In the study today, we see that Samuel confronted Saul because Saul did not do exactly what God had told him to do when it came to dealing with the Amicalites. God sent Saul out there to destroy them and totally obliviate them from the face of the earth because of what they have done to the nation of Israel. And now it was payday someday and they were going to have to pay the price for what they had done to the nation of Israel in the past. Well, Saul exercised a little bit of what we might call executive decision, and he chose to keep the best of the livestock, but he also chose to bring back the king who God had told him to kill. But Saul brought him back like a trophy in order to hold up before the people and say, look what I'd done. And as a result of it, God was going to call Saul accountable for his sins. And there are three sins specifically that are mentioned in the scriptures that Saul committed. The first one was he violated the Lord's command. The second one was he didn't follow the Lord's instruction. And then the third one was he admitted that he was more afraid of the people than he was of God. All these things accumulate, accumulated into a sin that when Samuel confronted Saul, it forced a confession out of him. And that's a key phrase. You see, a forced confession is not always a genuine confession. And there is a difference. And we're going to see both of them in our scriptures today. The first one, Samuel went to Saul and said, you didn't do right. And Saul denied it. Now, he confessed that he did it but he was not willing to accept the responsibility of the fact that he did it. He was saying what he had to say in order to get out of the situation that he was in at the time. The reason I know that was because he asked Samuel, would you go up to church and worship with me now? Yes, I confess that I did it. Yes, I acknowledge that I did it, and that should make it okay. But, hey, would you now go to church with me and worship with me? And Samuel said, no, I'm not going to go participate in that. I'm not going to have any part to do with a confession that is not genuine, a confession that had to be forced out of you be, and it was not a genuine one. And so Samuel turns to leave and to go away. And Saul reaches up and grabs his robe and tears it. And Samuel turns around and he says, Just as you have torn my robe, God has torn the kingdom from you and is going to give it to a man after God's own heart. And in that minute, Saul's effectiveness as a king went away. It was because he had not genuinely confessed what God was pointing out to him through Samuel. And he was willing to accept the responsibility of and issue a genuine repentance to God. Had he done so, things would have turned out differently. But when he didn't, God said, fine, here's the decision I'm going to make. The kingdom is no longer going to be yours. I'm going to give it to somebody else. And God would not change his mind. In fact, if you look at verse 29, it says of God, for he is not a man that he should change his mind. Once God made his decision, once he rendered his judgment on the basis of a forced confession, not a genuine confession, Saul's life was forever going to be changed. Now, did that mean that God would not accept a genuine confession after that? Certainly not. In fact, he did. Because when you look at verse 30, it said, Saul replied, I have sinned. In that moment, he had a genuine confession. But the damage was already done as far as his effectiveness for the rest of his life. It didn't have to be that way. God didn't want it to be that way. Samuel didn't want it to be that way. But Saul made it that way. And once he made it that way and God made his mind up, okay, you're no longer fit to be the leader of my nation, God was not going to change. You see, Saul was willing to change and go with whichever way the wind was blowing. God is not that way. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, the reason I think that Saul's confession the second time was a genuine confession and not a forced confession was because he asked Samuel, Samuel, would you now go up to worship with me? And Samuel did. And Samuel went up, and they worshipped. And then they finished what should have been done in the first place. And the king was up before them, and the king was killed. The job was completed, but it wasn't until the damage was done. Here's the message for the day. If God has to force you to make a confession, and then you make a confession that is not genuine, don't get mad at God if he makes a decision that says, okay, I'm going to measure out punishment appropriate to your reaction. And also remember this, had it Saul genuinely confessed, that would have never happened. But it didn't turn out that way. And it won't turn out that way for you and me. You know why? Because God is a God that doesn't change for people, but people need to change for God.